On this episode, we take an inside look at Star Wars and the rise of Skywalker. As I see it, this has nothing to do with past, present, or future. Star Wars could be in any of those areas. We hit the convention floor at the San Diego International Comic Con. You can hear about it, you can, you can see photos and videos, but it's nothing compared to actually attending. And we meet a man who's built one monster of a mask making company. I've always been collecting them ever since I was a kid. I just think they're a, a lot of fun to put on and turn into something else. And that all starts right now. Chris Bellini here, the Blue Jean Critic. Welcome to Quick Takes, a program that goes behind the scenes of Hollywood's biggest films and gives you an inside look in everything involving entertainment and pop culture. Now, if we're gonna talk about the biggest films, we should start with Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker. It's in theaters now. It's the last and final installment in what's considered to be one of the most successful film franchises in motion picture history. Now, we were introduced to the story over 40 years ago, and in that time, people from around the world have really embraced it. So let's start with a look at the legacy of Star Wars. Take a few minutes for the Navi computer to calculate the coordinates. A few minutes? Are you kidding at the rate they're gaining? Uh, you know, what is it? <laughs> you have to shoot this. Traveling through hyperspace is like dusting, ain't like Dustin Crops, kid. Without precise calculations, we fly too close to a store. They're bouncing to a supermarket and then... <laughs> yeah. Be a hell of a mess. What's that? Watch. We're losing the deflector shields. Go strap yourselves in. Be careful on the way out. Yeah, sure. I'm taking very close to them. You... Go away! Bounce too near a supermarket? <laughs> this is a very simple, basic idea. It's a story about a farm boy in Nebraska and not on Tatooine. It was originally designed to be a modern fairy tale. About good and evil, you know, and what prevails and what doesn't prevail. It's unlimited, the possibilities of what they can do. If this one doesn't work out, we're sort of finished. But hopefully, it will justify it as a series, make you say, gee, what happens next? The whole experience has been so completely unanticipated. I had my doubts about whether another Star Wars would work. But I now get that phrase, thank you for my childhood, because it's something that people carry with them now, forever and ever and ever. As I see it, this has nothing to do with past, present, or future. Star Wars could be in any of those areas. It's a big part of what makes these films so important to pass on from generation to generation. I feel honored that I've been allowed to continue the journey. It's very cool to meet someone inspirational to a generation of moviegoers. Those that have gone before you, incredible artists in their own right. You delve deeper in your appreciation and respect for that. Oh my gosh. It feels like I was just in a time machine and I had traveled back to when they first started filming Star Wars. Roll the cameras. If you're a kid watching this 100 years from now, 500 years from now. Sounds me. You see this inevitability, this story conclude in a way that feels thrilling and shocking and funny and emotional and satisfying. I like these films. I think there's a legacy that's important. <laughs> Ready, set, nine. Camera up, take nine. Episode nine will be a conclusion of a story that is over 40 years in the making. Action! So all stops are out and uh, it's all go. Now, Star Wars has amassed one of the biggest and most loyal fan bases around. And that takes me to the next story about a fan, about a man who's created an unforgettable place, showcasing an unbelievable collection of everything Star Wars. I'm talking about the legendary Rancho Obi-Wan.
Every saga has a beginning, and the story behind Rancho Obi-Wan takes us back down to Earth. Once a chicken ranch, this 10,000 square foot Sonoma County warehouse now houses what the Guinness Book of World Records calls the world's largest collection of Star Wars memorabilia. Rancho Obi-Wan is almost a uh, state of mind as well as a physical location. It's the home of my collection of almost half a million pieces of Star Wars memorabilia that I've been collecting for more than 40 years. The former head of Lucasfilm Fan Relations, Steve Sansweet, began his journey back in 1977. There was something about Star Wars that grabbed me from the very beginning. The characters, the basis in mythology, everything just added up to a fun ride. Although maybe not as exciting as Luke Skywalker's trash compactor escape, the rise of Rancho Obi-Wan did begin in the trash with this promotional booklet. So it came to the guy who covered the movie industry at the Wall Street Journal, and he looked through it and he tossed it in his wastebasket. I waited for him to leave for the day and then sort of uh, tiptoed over to the wastebasket and did a little dumpster diving. And that was my very first Star Wars collectible. Since then, Sand Suite's empire has grown. With rare toys and 8,000-piece Lego displays, Rancho Obi-Wan showcases every aspect of the Star Wars universe, including works of art. We have uh, mostly original art on the walls. I'm always looking for the unique. I just got a portrait of Leia done in buttons. Rancho Obi-Wan offers behind-the-scenes tours. You in Rebel Starship Corridor 1138. What are you doing there? Well, I'm just showing these we'll folks. See some identification. You don't need to see our identification. We don't need to see their identification. Tours last two and a half to three hours. They're filled with anecdotes about the items, how I came to collect them, with tales of adventure and stupidity and fun. One of the more unusual adventures involved a visit to the set of Star Wars Episode One. The Phantom Menace. When they burned Qui-Gon Jinn at the funeral pyre and they took the wax dummy out back, I sort of followed it and pieces had fallen off the wax dummy in the fire. Um, and so I have the last remaining pieces of Qui-Gon Jinn. So there are plenty of interesting stories, interactive photo opportunities, an extensive library, a Star Wars video arcade, and you can't forget the entertainment. My own in-house band, of course, they play the same song over and over again, so it gets a little tiring. But Sand Sweet is far from tired. He continually finds inspiration from sharing his collection with his visitors. It's very important for me to be able to let other people share what I have loved for so many years. Star Wars is forever, and that is a slogan that has never been truer. For more information about how you can take a tour, go to RanchoObiWan.org. Stay tuned. When we come back, we'll take you to the largest pop culture comics event in the United States. Everybody gets to come to San Diego and celebrate what it means to be a geek or to be a nerd or to just celebrate what it is that you love most. If you like creepy clowns, artists, performers, collectibles, puppets, and some things of pop culture under the blanket of horror, then check out Circus of Chaos, a show where we feature talents from around the country glued together by bad comedy every Saturday night at midnight on Coffee TV Cable 713. Keep calm. Woo! Take a deep breath. Stop lying! And watch Wilkos. Heck yeah, I bet his hand. You hear this? The Steve Wilko Show. Weekdays at 3 p.m. on Coffee TV 20. Carolyn McCardle on Coffee TV. I hope you have a wonderful new year. Be safe and we'll see you next year. All those great shows that you love so much on Coffee TV. We'll see you in 2020. It's the ultimate test of strength. <laughs> Endurance. <laughs> 1422 foot pursuit. Stop running, stop running on the tape. Come out with your hands up. And skill. So it sniffed the seat of the band. And it tracked right to you. 
That's a crazy job. You got a dog. Witness the thrill of victory. You're under arrest. And the agony of defeat. I'm tired of going to jail. Okay. Well, you're going again. Cops. Viewer discretion advised. Weekdays at 2.30 on Coffee TV. Welcome back. I'm Chris Bellini. Whether it's films, television, comics, whatever you love, rest assured you can find a convention where you can meet like-minded people, where you can share your passions. One of those conventions, the largest in the United States, it's one of the most immersive experiences that you can imagine, is San Diego International Comic Con. In fact, tickets for this event sell out within hours of them going on for sale. So if you've ever wondered what it's like to go to this event, we're going to take you there now. What appears to be a quiet morning in downtown San Diego is actually just the calm before the storm. In just a few hours, these tranquil streets will be frenetic. More than 135,000 people will come by train, bus, and foot. Wait, wait. the San Diego International Comic Con. You can hear about it, you can, you can see photos and videos, but it's nothing compared to actually attending. Everybody gets to come to San Diego and celebrate what it means to be a geek or to be a nerd or to just celebrate what it is that you love most. Like many great superhero origin stories, this amazing convention was born from humble beginnings. The very first convention, we had 300 people at the basement of the U.S. Grand Hotel, which is still in San Diego. It was March 21st, 1970. Shell Dorf, Ken Kruger, and Richard Alf came together with a group to host Southern California's first convention to promote the importance of comics. Comics are wonderful in that you can look at them from any decade in American history, and it's a timeline. You look at the covers, it's the fads, it's the fashion, it's the slang that people were using at the time. They're a big part of history. Today, Comic-Con is continually making history of its own. Record-breaking crowds jam-pack more than 600,000 square feet of exhibitor space. Think of your grocery aisle populated by everybody in your town, and that's pretty much what it's like in there. Attendees can meet their favorite artists, purchase original artwork, or just shop for any kind of collectible imaginable. This is an Amazing Fantasy 15. It's the very first appearance of Spider-Man. It's worth $52,000. But if you're not in the market for shopping, there's plenty more to see. I am dude. Vader. In fact, Comic-Con gives new meaning to the practice of people watching, because it's one of the largest stages for cosplay, a performance art blending two words, costume and play. <laughs> Cosplayers spend hundreds of hours and thousands of dollars dressing up as and impersonating their favorite characters. <laughs> and it can be an empowering experience. I've always been uncomfortable with my height, so just being able to dress up in costume and kind of be her was really important to me. Convention goers also encounter long lines at studio attractions. AMC's hit show The Walking Dead offers fans another kind of experience. Boom, boom. They can train for the zombie apocalypse. It's insane. Action! Or take a thrill ride on the Walking Dead-inspired slide. So that sucker is fast. <laughs> Amazon Studios transported visitors to the Middle East to get an up-close and personal look at their streaming series, Tom Clancy's Jack Ryan. We wanted to take normal people and thrust them into the action. Here we go, here we go, here we go. And by utilizing groundbreaking virtual reality, oh, they did just that. At DC Comics, it's also a chance to take the edge off a hectic day. We're going in. Our designers came up with the chaos room as sort of a pressure release valve. Hit it! Hit it! All the rage, all the anger, and everybody leaves with a smile. As the day's excitement eventually comes to an end, crowds head home having truly celebrated not just pop culture, but a deep sense of community. You feel like you're at home. You have everyone who's like you surrounding you. Who You can be yourself. No surprise here, tickets for Comic-Con 2020 are already sold out. Comic-Con covers a wide range of people's interests. If you're looking for something smaller, more focused, let's say on horror and sci-fi films, 
we've got the perfect convention for you. It's in Texas. It's about to celebrate its 15th year in 2020. You gotta wonder what makes it so special? Well, let's take a look back to see why this is a fan favorite. It was an ordinary Saturday morning in Irving, Texas, until zombies took over the streets. It looked just like a scene from AMC's hit television show. But in this case, The Walking Dead was a lively bunch of fans participating in a walk to kick off Texas Frightmare Weekend, the Southwest's premier horror convention. But before they could hit the road, all right, you guys ready to get your dead on? These eager participants had to get into character. And Janine Jarnick helped them put their game face on. I was doing the makeup for the zombie walk. I was making all the undead dead. Uh, Small, medium, or large on the blood. How you feeling uh, today? For Dean Jarnick, his job was to add a little color to the event. All right, we're going to let it fly. Literally. Who's next? Time to get red, bloody, and dirty, and green. Let's go. Well, you know, I just got to take advantage of anything that's white, because the blood shows up better. It's much more pronounced. Let's get you a nice little handprint. All right, there you go. And Joe Titus. I've been doing a zombie off and on for about 11 years. He helped inspire everyone to rise to the occasion. One, two, three. <laughs> you guys, you're going to be perfect zombies. <laughs> The mile-long walk ended at the Sheraton's Grand Ballroom, where Fright fans were already in line, waiting to watch screenings of classic and independent horror films. <laughs> to meet their favorite celebrities, like cast members from AMC's The Walking Dead, or just browse a vendor's room filled with enough merchandise to satisfy even the most die-hard fan. But according to James Turner, the highlight of his weekend was showing off his killer ride. <laughs> in the Hearst Shock and Rod Car Show. Uh, this is a 1987 Chevy Caprice. The car actually has a name, Bella Morte. Uh, it translates deadly beauty. It's been modified to my personal taste. People see it, they automatically think death. So I tried to go with the, kind of a morbid theme. I love the reactions I get driving down the highway. You know, people taking pictures, laughing, you see little kids just going nuts over it. And to me, that, that's what it's all about. Although hundreds of attendees loved his car, there was one person who had an undying admiration for it. This would be my son, Christopher. He's nine, and he wants this to be his first car. <laughs> Whether the machinery, the movies, or the merchandise, attendees had a thrilling good time. Organizers are gonna make sure that this anniversary year celebration is gonna be fantastic. They've already signed an ET, the extraterrestrial reunion. Alice Cooper, Clive Barker, to name a few, will be there. For more information on how you can get tickets, make sure you go to texasfrightmareweekend.com. Stay tuned. When we come back, we're gonna visit a Sonoma County event that takes pumpkin carving to a whole new level. It's like entering into an alternate universe and everything has completely changed into pumpkins. ABC 7 News on Coffee TV delivers weeknights at 7 and 11.30 p.m. with a full hour of news at 7 p.m. Perfect for late night commuters. And at 11.30 p.m., Coffee TV has the last word of the day. ABC 7 News on Coffee TV. Why would he break up with me? I may have found out from an anonymous secret source that Andre thinks you're shallow. Shallow? I, I know, baby. He is so wrong. That is such a relief. I thought it was something serious, like I was ugly. Blackish. Weeknights at 8 and 8.30 on Coffee TV 20. Hey, I'm Jerry Springer, and I'm back on Coffee TV. Watch every Monday through Friday at 4 o'clock for another season of The Jerry Springer Show. Tough, rugged. Last Man Standing's Mike Baxter. I love you so much. That doesn't sound like the, I love you, you're a great husband. It sounds like I love you, I scratched your truck. More horsepower. <laughs> I should have worn a diaper today. And better gas mileage. <laughs> oh, my God! Last Man Standing, tough like Mike. Weeknights at 9 and 9.30 on Coffee TV 20. Welcome back to Quick Takes, I'm Chris Blaney. Now, Trick or Treat Studios is one of the largest mask-making companies in the United States. They're dedicated to making old-school, high-quality masks. In fact, they have licenses to some of the biggest film and television franchises out there. Now imagine, it all started with one man's childhood love of Halloween masks. Meet the founder of Trick or Treat Studios. 
Chris Zephro. Growing up, my entire life, I was always in the masks. I've always been collecting them ever since I was a kid. I just think they're a, a lot of fun to put on and turn into something else. Meet the man behind the mask, Chris Zephro. He's turned his childhood passion into a dream job. For Trick or Treat Studios, we specialize in vintage retro characters. I really wanted to bring back that feel from the early 70s, late 60s what I'll call the golden age of mask making. The great colors and the teeth and eyes. The best thing about having eyes in the mask is it really brings a character to life. And one mask in particular will be the ultimate treat for his fans. With getting, you know, the Halloween 2 mask from Universal Studios is what I would consider the grail of, of masks for Halloween. According to Zephro, following your dreams is hard work. It's very, very labor intensive mass making. There's just so much hand artistic work done in each one. It's 100% made with these and, and blood and sweat and sometimes tears are involved too. Character designer and sculptor Eric Lubati considers each mask a work of art. It incorporates drawing, sculpture. Get your fingers in that clay. And, and just push all those forms around and, and then detail them with little tools. and It's absolutely an art form. When it comes to making a mask, the ingredients are simple. It's latex. It's synthetic hair. It's paint. It doesn't have its character yet until you put on the accent colors and when it comes to life is when the person puts it on and gives it a personality. That's the reward. Although Trick or Treat Studios sold over 60,000 masks this year, sales isn't the only measure of their success. There's a really warm feeling that goes through me every time we box something up and ship it out that somebody is going to look at that and wear it on Halloween night and enjoy it. The first time I ever saw somebody trick-or-treating in my stuff, it was really cool to see somebody out there, you know, collecting candy with, with one of our masks on. Now, although Michael Myers' mask is synonymous with Halloween, Pumpkins have always been the number one symbol. So we visited a Halloween event in Sonoma County that took you inside a magical world of pumpkins. It's not a haunted house. It's not your pumpkin patch. Uh, it's a whole new experience. You see something that you've never seen before. Pumpkin Nights, an after dark attraction, is casting a new light on the spirit of the season. It's like entering into an alternate universe and everything has completely changed into pumpkins. Thousands of artificial hand-carved pumpkins create an inviting and festive atmosphere perfect for people of all ages. We're not about scares, we're not about gore. It's a very fun, family-friendly environment. Visitors can take a half-mile stroll through seven different themed pumpkin lands. The Pumpkin Reef is definitely one of my favorite lands. It's an under-the-sea theme where you find yourself brought to the depths of the ocean. We have the pumpkin jellyfish, we have the pumpkin coral reefs. It's not just the pumpkin carving that we have going on here at Pumpkin Nights. It's also the art that's put together using pumpkins. We have a 40-foot long dragon that's built entirely from pumpkins. When I see the kids that walk around, I see the, their faces light up. Every kid is saying, like, this is so cool. I like to help them use the word pumptastic. <laughs> Although the event goes dark after Halloween, organizers hope that the magic of pumpkin nights will endure. Three, two, one. People love to take pictures all throughout Pumpkin Nights, and we absolutely encourage it. You can take a pumpkin with you, but that doesn't last forever. A picture does. You're creating memories for people. It does definitely get you in the spirit of Halloween. Now, this event is held in different locations around the United States. For information about where the 2020 locations are going to be, make sure you go to pumpkinnights.com. Stay tuned. When we come back, we're going to look ahead to 2020 at one of the most anticipated films coming out, one that I'm really excited about. That's coming up next. Name? Bond. James Bond. 
Hey, Bay Area, we love videos like yours. Friends, family, pets, send us all your amazing adventures. Go to writethisminute.com and click upload your video. You might just see your video on Write This Minute. Weeknights at 10 and 10.30 on Coffee TV. It's Coffee TV's Court Block. Every weekday from 10 to 1, three hours of justice. Starting with Supreme Justice and Judge Karen. I don't know what goes on in your house, but I'm running this show. And wrapping up at noon with a full hour of America's Court with Judge Ross. This gavel doesn't bang itself. Every weekday right here on Coffee TV 20. Welcome back to Quick Takes. I'm Chris Bellini. Now we've run out of time, but we're going to close the show with giving you a sneak peek at one of the most anticipated films of 2020. It's the 25th James Bond film, No Time to Die. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Why would I betray you? We all have our secrets. We just didn't get to yours yet. The world is arming faster than we can respond. Where's 007? I need a favor, brother. You're the only one I trust for this. The world's moved on, Commander Bond. You were double O. Two years. So stay in your lane. You get in my way. I will put a bullet in your knee. I thought you two would get along. Name? Bond. James Bond. So you're not dead? Hello, Q. I've missed you. It's the most valuable asset this country has. If you feel yourself losing control, I'm not going to lose. Control. Gave up everything for her. When her secret finds its way out, it'll be the death of you. What is it? You don't know what this is. James Bond. License to kill. History of violence. I could be speaking to my own reflection. Only your skills die with your body. Mine will survive long after I'm gone. History isn't kind to men who play God.